Welcome to the Frugal Frau. Hi, I'm Suki, your host. Today we're going to dehydrate winter squash and we're going to use a homemade dehydrator to do this. So let's get started. Okay, I need to put the final edge on my kitchen axe and I do this using my rouge coated leather strop. This is a relatively inexpensive axe that my husband fixed up for me. I keep it in my kitchen for jobs like this, breaking squash open. Most knives are too delicate to be pounded by a mallet, but this axe can easily handle it. And just a few wax gets the job done. Look how easily this kabocha squash separates. Isn't that nice? I use the axe primarily for having and quartering the squash. The rest can be done easily with a knife. And of course, I have to admit that I do enjoy the drama of using an axe in the kitchen. Once my squash is cut into quarters, I remove the seeds which I will rinse off, dry, and save for next year's crop. I find a large, sturdy spoon works the best for this job. Don't use sterling silver or any other soft metal because it will surely bend or possibly break. And I don't think you'd want that to happen. Once my seeds are removed, I use a well-sharpened knife to cut off the skin and rind. These will be given to the chickens, who will then eat them, digest them, tromp on them, scatter them, or otherwise compost them. I trim the squash into pieces that allow me to easily get that skin off without chopping off my fingers or having the squash slip around too much. Next, I slice my squash into one eighth inch to one quarter inch thick slices. So on average, I probably cut these about three sixteenths of an inch thick, though I never measure this. This seems to be an ideal size for blanching, which is the step I will proceed to after I finish chopping all of this up. When I blanch my squash, I typically just allow it to go, oh, I'd say two to three minutes. And if they're really thick pieces in there, I'll leave them in a little bit longer. The blanching process assures that the squash dries better, in my opinion, and also permits it to rehydrate a little bit better when I go to use it in a recipe. I have set out my homemade drying racks. These are made from wood and hardware cloth. They are two feet 
by four feet in size, and I cover them with silicone mats that I did purchase and I had to cut to fit. These keep the squash from sticking and make cleanup very easy as the silicone mats are easily washed in a bowl of warm and soapy water. On this same day, I happened to also blanch some of the last of the potatoes that were not going to be kept in the root cellar for long-term storage. These are also the last of the squash as I have done a few batches before this video was made. The potatoes are cut to about the same thickness as the squash and they take about the same amount of time to dry, so this was not a problem. Well, this was the last of the squash and the potatoes that needed to be dried this year. So I only ended up with the final three racks to dry. Typically, I am drying six to eight racks at a time to maximize the efficiency and the use of the wood stove to do this. With the help of my husband, Tom, we moved the wood rack frame into position above the wood stove. Next, we placed the three racks upon the frame above the wood stove. Notice that each rack has spacers on it. This allows for better airflow in between the racks to dry whatever it is you're going to be drying using this system. If I had eight racks here, which I sometimes do, I would probably rotate the racks around in position just to ensure that everything dries evenly because this will take approximately two days to dry. With the racks in place, it's time to build a fire and light up the wood stove. I start with using spills from our wood shop since we have a seemingly endless supply of them because of all of our projects. And after that, I will add kindling and some larger pieces of wood to further build this fire. Please note, I will never leave this stove unattended while I'm going through the entire drying process. It's not that I'm sitting there babysitting it, but I do not go out from the property and I keep a close eye on it. When I first light the stove, I keep a fairly hot fire for a couple of hours, which at this time of year is really good because it happens to be fall by the calendar, but winter outside. My fire is lit and it looks like it's going to keep going, so I simply add more wood. Then I'm going to close this down. And after a couple of hours before I go to bed, I will close down the airflow to just let this fire smolder all night long. The wood rack does not touch the metal surfaces of the stove at any point, And it actually is a fairly safe distance from the hot edges of the stove. When we made this frame, we tested it and modified the distances that we needed to safely clear the edges of the wood stove. Well, the squash is dry and it's time to take it off the rack. Most of the time, I uh, let it get almost crispy like that. And that's because often I will grind this into flour and then use it. Otherwise, 
if some of them are a little soft or the whole batch is soft or dirt then my uh, then for grinding I'll just use it to thicken soups and stews see getting these uh, squash off is really easy because of these mats because I can simply fold them and not have to pick them off one by one so that's really good So I'll usually get two and a half, maybe five gallons of dried squash, and uh, that will last me a few years. And we store it in airtight five gallon buckets or two gallon buckets with gamma lids, because that actually keeps most of the moisture out until we can either grind it or put it in soups and stews. There. Nice and pretty, nice and dry. All right, the last of the squash is off the trays. And I'm adding it to my big bowl so you can see the bounty for this year. It was a good year for squash in the garden. So, it turned out beautiful and it has multiple uses. I can grind it into flour. I can add it to thicken soups and stews. I could simply rehydrate it and cook it, make an au gratin or something like that out of it. Or, what I'm going to do later this year is grind it and add it to pemmican. So that will be a fun project and I think I'll make a video and share that with you too. Thank you for watching and enjoy your dried squash.